Hello everyone, I want to show you how you can navigate in Ableton Session View via your MIDI controller. Trigger the sel currently selected clips, have a big, large um, pop-up window which you can change the size and save its position for. You can even record stuff and and trigger and re-trigger and re-loop things if you want to. Okay, so it's all happening via Max for Life devices. Max for Life is included in Ableton Live Suite or can be bought as an add-on towards Ableton Live Standard. And you get those three devices if you follow the link in the video description. It's a pack you can buy. It will work in Ableton Live Suite 10, 11 and 12. And you can see I'm navigating um, via the down and up and right <laughs> and obviously I can't click on those if it's going to the right it's going to the next um, track here selection so that's why it makes sense to use MIDI controllers here and you quickly want to navigate and you can see in the pop-up window here it's changing the color to the currently selected clip and if there is no clip, it tells you no clip. If there is a clip with no name, let's put one in. It tells you no name. Okay, so let's have a look on here. You got another device which will fire the selected, currently selected clip. And this pop-up window here is uh, controlled via the third device, open and close and uh, you can change the position and the size. Let's set it down a little bit smaller. You can save the window position, you can reset the window position to its initial thingy here, and if you save its position and its size, it will get recalled when you open up this Ableton Live set. Okay, so there are obviously um, different ways on how to MIDI maps things here. Um, you get the native MIDI map menu in Ableton Live, which you might be familiar with already. You just select a uh, parameter here, uh, maybe let's select the up button here and then you um, have your MIDI controller connected and the remote import needs to be switched on to map this. So, and now you are able to control up via this MIDI mapping you just made. Let us delete this MIDI mapping here again because there is a much nicer way on how to do this. So um, if you're using MIDI notes, if your controller is sending MIDI notes, which most pads controllers are doing, or if you have a uh, key command, um, no, a key, a MIDI keyboard, you can use uh, sending MIDI notes here as well. And what you need to do is you need to route your MIDI controller into this track. So if we open up the in and out section here and let's fold down the window for a second, you can see that I'm routing my APD8 MK2, which is this controller here. I'm routing this into the track here. So this track is receiving MIDI notes and on this track I have those um, three devices sitting on. And you can now um, receive those MIDI notes inside the device and just map those to the MIDI note pitches you are sending. The big advantage here is that you are now able to um, save and recall those presets here and the mappings you made via the direct MIDI in mapping are being stored. Okay, so for example, if I put this into my user library and copy that in here and um, ooh, how did I name it? Let's um, save it. Select navigate clips such view. That's uh, navigation preset maybe. Preset. So if I now Recall this preset, I will have my mid direct in MIDI mappings, the MIDI notes, which are showing up down below the up, down, right, left function here. They are being recalled instantly. So that's a big advantage of using direct in MIDI mapping, which I include preset in most of my devices here. Just so you know, it's a general technique. 
So um, let us have a quick look on how to set this up. So obviously we have the MIDI routed being in here. We need to make sure that the monitor is set to in. So MIDI is being received all the time. So we can see if I'm hitting something that MIDI is being received here. And as I said before, you would need MIDI notes for that. So pads are usually sending different MIDI notes pitches. So I can now go um, to the different functions and below each function here, for example, the up, I have this MIDI note input here. I can switch on on this toggle here. I now hit S for sync. And if I now hit a pad, you can see the MIDI note pitch is being detected. Let's do this again with um, having a MIDI note pitch set to a different value here first. So if I now hit S, bomb, it's detecting my F1. And let's quickly do this with all of those. Just so you see, you switch them on. You hit S for um, sync and it's now flashing and waiting for the next MIDI note to come in. And if I now hit a pad, bomb, it's detecting those MIDI notes pitches. And this is how easy and how quick it would work to now have the setup. And you can see now, and let's open the pop-up window so we can see this a little bit better. Um, that the different uh, clips are being selected. I go up, up, up. I go down, down, down. I go right, another one right, and left, left, go up. And we can see this on this track here, quite nice, that I'm now being able to select those different clips or clip slots. So for example, if I now in this fifth track here and I have this clip here being selected, I could now actually hit record um, or, or start hit, fire this clip and then I can um, record and reloop this clip here as well. So for this, I would need to set up the second device here, which is the fire fire selected clip slot device. So I set this up to be same technique here. I set this up to be this pad down below here. Now it's saved as well. So if I now save those both devices in here or the whole track, I can record this track in any Ableton Live set. Again, it would work in 10, 11 and 12, but you would need Max for Live, which is included in Suite or can be bought as an add-on towards Ableton Live standard. Okay, so the last device before I do a little um, show example here again would be the show name of selected clip slot. Okay, okay, so, so uh, we have we the pop-up pop window, window being placed, placed here. here. And, and as, as I said, said before, before, you can change, you change the zoom, zoom, you can change, change the position, position and, and you can save its position here, here pressing S, S on here, here or press save, save window, window position. position. And, and when, when you, you open, open up this Ableton Live, Live set, set, you can recall this. So you got three devices here now, which are being set up. And you can actually recall this whole track here in um, if you, um, save, if you this save this whole track, track in, in your, your user library, library, you can, can recall this whole this track, track in and across, across Ableton, Ableton Live sets. sets. And, and the, the mapping, mapping are already made, made because, because you're using direct, direct MIDI in, in mapping, mapping here. Again, here. Again you, would you would need, need uh, Max for Life, which is included in Ableton Live Suite, Suite or can or be can bought as an add-on towards Ableton Live Standard. And it will work, it will work in, in Ableton Live, Live Suite, Suite 10, 10, 11, 11 or 12. 12. Okay. okay, so, so um, what, um, what do, do we want to do? We want to go to some clips here. Ah, I wanted I to show you one thing. You can switch, switch on, on and off the color, color changing. changing. If, if that's, that's too flashy, flashy for you, you, you can, can just, just have a gray background and not changing to the different colors of the clips. Now I switched on the color again. And, and we, we can, can navigate, navigate and have, have the, the current, current colors, colors being displaced. displaced. Okay, okay. displayed. Okay, okay so, so if I start this clip, this clip here, here, maybe, maybe let's, let's quickly delete, delete those, those just, to, just show to show you. you. I can I now can navigate, navigate through, through my Ableton Live set, set start, start different, different clips. clips. Nice. Maybe, maybe another Hyatt loop. loop. Maybe, Maybe a different, different main, main loop, loop here. here. And I and can, I can even, even go, go to uh, empty, empty clip, clip slots here. here. And, and if, if this, this is all set, set up, up to, to record, record and I have, I have a few sounds, sounds on here, here. I, can I can hit, hit 
trigger, trigger this, this empty, empty clip, clip slot, slot now, now as well. As well. And record, and record something, something in, in here. here. Okay, okay. So, so I hope, I hope this, this is all accessible, all accessible and give you some, some ideas of how, of how to control Ableton Live session, session in a different way. way. Check, Check out, out uh, uh, my, my other stuff, stuff at ablerdrama.com. A link, link to, to this, this pack, pack is, is in the, the video description, description here. here. Take, Take care. care. Bye bye. bye, bye.